Hi guys! Hello! It's been a while since my last video and I was thinking I don't have any like content to think about. That's why now I I just thought maybe I could share with you guys my journey and how I learned how to drive here in UK and uh, for your information as well, I just recently passed last February. That's why I'm gonna share you now how I've done it, okay? I'm not giving you tips. It's not tips, but it's just more of letting you know my journey, you know, kung nahirapan ba ako, what, you know, all the obstacles and things like that. I will let you know here in this video. Okay. First, for a start, I came here or arrived here in UK 2011. Um, back in the Philippines, I was driving since 19, or I learned how to drive since 1992, but I didn't do actual driving until I bought, I bought my own car in the Philippines, which is around 1997. So it's meaning I already have a driver's license in 1992 and I was like 22 years old, but I never drove the car because I want to have my own car. And I only got a new my own car when I was already 27 years old. That was way back 1997. So don't compute my age. I'm already old. Okay. Anyway, so uh, I've been driving an automatic car in the Philippines before I came here in United Kingdom or England. However, when I arrived, I have a lot of priorities, you know. Um, it's quite expensive to live here in UK. And at that time, I don't have a job. It's just my husband and I have a son. So in other words, it wasn't my priority to learn how to drive at that time because we have to fix first our visas and that costs a lot of money. I'm sure some people would know how much the cost of visas now nowadays. It's really expensive. So by the way, to cut the story short, I didn't, uh, I stopped driving for years, in other words. And then we decided to finally go into driving lessons uh, around 2017 so in 2017 I, I got a provisional driver's license that's what you call here in the Philippines it's a stu student driver's license I think here it's a provisional driver's license um, so I got one back in I think 2016 but I didn't start learning until 2017 when I used to work in the bank here in UK okay so I started work uh, dri driving uh, I started to have driving lessons to, since 2017. However, I wasn't consistent, meaning it wasn't every week. It's like, it, it's like, how do you call that? It's not always. It's stop. I would stop, then I would continue. I would stop. It would be months that I'm not doing any lessons. In other words, it wasn't that, um, what do you call that? I wasn't persistent in learning at the time. And also, I was trying to learn a manual car. <laughs> a manual you know stick shift the one with the gears yeah so i was trying to learn that one and i was struggling because i'm not used to the manual car because i was driving an automatic back home in the philippines so in other words i tried to learn and then normally here your instructor would say if you're ready to take the lessons in other words i never took the practical test at that time i was just learning and then I moved to another company where you, in 2018. So I had to move my instructor. I have to change my instructor as well, primarily because it's a bit, it's not, I work not in Andover anymore, but I work out, outside Andover. So it's a bit quite far if my instructor will drive, you know, in where I, where I work. So in other words, I had to get another instructor and start from, the beginning again start to learn again still a manual car because my husband wanted me to learn uh, how to drive a manual car because our car is manual which makes sense um yeah so when i was learning in 2018 uh 2019 then finally my instructor said i'm ready to take the test oh by the way before you could take a practical test, you have to take a theory test here in UK. So the theory test, um, I won't discuss the details, but it has an expiry. 
it expires after two years. So if within that two years, you didn't pass your practical test, you need to take again the theory, theory test, okay? So what happened to me from 2018 to 2020, I tried... I tried several times on the manual car and I failed. Well, I'm not I'm not ashamed to that, let you know guys that I failed four times in a manual car. And the last one was during the pandemic around 2020, late 2020. So meaning that was my last test and I failed. And by that time, a week after, my theory will already expire. So since it's lockdown anyway, so I failed, right? So that was four times I tried and I still I failed. And then my theory theory test also expired. And that's the time where everything stopped. No, it's uh the driving lesson stopped because because of pandemic of because of COVID and also even the practical tests, they stopped for a while. So then I decided, I told my husband once everything gets back to normal, meaning we're already allowed to do driving lessons again, I just want to learn how to drive an automatic here in the UK. So I think it will be easier because I thought, I think, I think that would be quite easier for me to drive an automatic because I already drove automatic car back then in the Philippines. So my husband agreed, finally, <laughs> my finally, my husband agreed for me to take the automatic driving lessons. So in 20, what year? I'm trying to think, what year did I start? So in around November, November 2022, I, cause because of the pandemic, you know, guys, here in UK, before you could take a test, you need to find a driving instructor. You just can't take the practical test without an instructor. It is a requirement that you learn through an instructor. It was so hard to look for a driving instructor for automatic cars. There's not a lot who teach automatic cars in our area because we live in a town, in a small town. It's not a city, so it's quite hard. So I've been searching and searching, messaging people, messaging, you know, uh, instructors, and they don't have vacancy until by November 2022, someone messaged me that he now has a slot to teach me. So I grabbed that opportunity. I took I, I got him as my instructor, so that was around November 2022, so meaning a few months after, it's already 2023, right? So meaning since November, I started, 2022, I started to learn an automatic car. So by the following year, around Feb, he told me, maybe I should start taking the theory test again, because I need another one. Remember, I told you it expired already, my theory test. So I had to take another theory theory test. So just in case he thinks I'm ready to take the test, then I could do the practical test. Yeah. So I took the theory test and I passed the theory test. It's not it, it is hard actually the theory test if you did not study. You really need to study. But it, it's quite it would help if you study online or through an app. So I actually bought an app. To help me with my theory test it's, it is very helpful so for those uh, people who wants to pass the theory not like it's not a guarantee but I think it really helps a lot because I pass get the app so there are there are apps available out there you need to pay it's a uh, it's not free so you need to pay for it anyway that's the theory test so I passed that and then I had I had to do driving lessons every week because the place where I'm gonna going to take the test is a bit far, like a 20 to 25 minutes drive from our place. I had to take two hours lesson every time. So every week I do a two hours lesson with my instructor and we have to travel to the place where I'm gonna take the test eventually. So that's where he uh that's that's the place where he taught me how to drive because it makes sense so that i'll know the roads and everything so we did that for since november of 2022 and then so it's actually more than a year it's like i could say it's 
a year and two months. I know a year and four months. A year and four months that I learned to use the automatic car here in UK. Some of you might say, why is it it took you so long? I thought you've been driving already in the Philippines for so many years. <laughs> yes, true. I've been driving for a long time, but my driving is not really that good in the sense that I have bad habits. And in all, you all know, I mean, for the Filipinos who are watching at the moment, I'm sure you know that driving in Manila, I live in Baclaran, Paranaque. So Baclaran, Paranaque is a really crowded place. There's a lot of bus, jeepneys, and everything. And then I work in Makati. So for you to learn how to drive, you have to be very, um, how do you call that? Is it, it, I'm not sure if it's called defensive driver, but you have to be really, um, sa atin, tawag yung, Magaling sumingit, yung talagang, yung gitgitan kasi di po ba sa Philippines. So, yun ang ibig ko sabihin, kailangan mo talaga uh, matutunan, makipaggitgitan sa mga jeeps and buses. Medyo mahirap i-translate sa English. Sorry for those who can understand Tagalog, but I was trying to say, in the Philippines, you have to learn how to drive along with the bus and jeepneys, you know. So, you need to be really... <laughs> Uh, not scared of them and just and be close to them that's how we drive we tailgate to you know we do tailgating in other words and in here here in uk that's not allowed you will fail your test if you tailgate another car meaning you have to observe the distance like when it's on a stoplight you shouldn't be very near you should be able to see the wheels the tires of the car in front of you that is the distance that you need to maintain every time you stop imagine that but in the philippines no it's bumper to bumper so i have those bad habits and i don't always use my mirrors as well in the philippines like i would normally use the one here in front of me and then the left because it's a left hand drive in the philippines so here you have to be observant and use all the mirrors you know so that's how it is in the Philippines and it's very different here in UK. Another second consideration aside from my bad habits, the roads here you have to drive on the left and the car's steering wheel is on the right. So it's the opposite of what we have in the Philippines. In the Philippines it's a left hand drive. So my orientation in driving it's like Oh, this is an exit, but actually it's not. It's an entrance, <laughs> especially in parking, parking lots or parking areas. Uh, I remember I had a lesson wherein uh, the instructor told me, go and enter the parking. And I went through the right. And he said, oh, oh, oh no, no, no. A car might just, that's not, that's not the entrance. That's the exit. You have to go on the left. Oh, I said, oh, shit. I'm no longer in the Philippines. You get what I mean? Like, if you've been driving for a long time in the Philippines and then you tried it here, you will have to change your way of thinking and everything because it's so different. That's another one. Third, the roads. Okay. In the Philippines, the roads are just straight. Either you go straight, you turn right, you turn left. And it's very plain, isn't it? There's no hills and mountains because I live in the countryside, Andover is in Hampshire, so meaning the the area is like uh, very winding, winding roads, there's uphill, downhill, so it's not as simple as a straight road. You will always be driving on, you know, winding roads, uphill, downhill, and Aside from traffic lights, they have roundabouts. A roundabout is like the one in the Quezon City Memorial Circle. That is just an example. And in a, the Quezon City Memorial Memorial Circle, the big roundabout, I, if I remember right, I use, I've, I've drove there before. Um, you mga sasakyan, no, the cars, they just make sing it, sing it, diba? sing it tan. That's not allowed here. They have rules. Whenever you go to the roundabout, you always give way to your right. Meaning all the cars in the right should pass first before you could go. When it's free and there's no more cars going on the right, then you go. So, you know, those there, there are a lot of things to consider and those are the rules. 
aside from that, so that's the third. Fourth, I guess it's also observation in the speed limit because here, speed limits, they are, it's a big thing. I know in the Philippines, if you overspeed, especially in EDSA, no one cares. No one, the, the, I mean, I don't think police will stop you or because of the traffic and no one does overspeeding within the city anyway. So I'm sure, you know, it, it's not hard to drive in terms of speed limit. For us here, speed limits change. Sometimes it's 20, then it goes to 30, it goes to 40, and then the national speed limit is 60, and in motor race, it's 70. So you need to follow the speed limit. You have to be aware. You have to look every now and then what is the speed limit. So if, if well, in your practical test, you did not observe that actually the speed limit changed into 20 and you're driving 30, that will be a fail. So I told you guys, there's a lot to consider. Another thing is, aside from those things, are the road markings. In here, in the roads, it will tell you if you're in this lane, it goes to A303. In this lane, would only turn left, things like that. So if you're not observant, you would failure test if you don't follow those road markings you would definitely fail your test because it you know you'll be like uh confused on where you would go what lane to stay so those are the things you need to consider and it took me some time to understand those rules to be honest especially if you're so used to driving in manila in the you know makati paranaque quezon city those living within Manila, I mean, Metro Manila, you will struggle when you try to learn here because we don't have rules. Oh, I mean, we have rules in the Philippines for sure, but they're not that strict in compliance, right? Like, I mean, probably, yeah, there are MMDAs or policemen who would stop you every now and then, but it's not, how do you say that? It... it because of there's a lot of traffic, it will be seldom that someone will be stopped for doing wrong things, right? Like tailgating. I'm sure I, everyone will definitely get a ticket of tailgating if that was happening here in UK. Because everyone is like when they, you know, bumper to bumper. So that one alone, definitely like it's quite normal in the Philippines, right? So it's so different that so those that those are my journey. Those, those are my experiences, you know, here. That's why it, it took me some time really. And I'm so happy that I passed finally. <laughs> so I passed this February and I'm just gonna show you show you my driving license. I'm not gonna show you the other details, but so the driving license here is that's my photo. And then that's it, the UK driving license. But as I've said, I learned the um, automatic. So this license would indicate that I'm only allowed to drive at the back um, automatic cars. So that's it, guys. So I told you this will just be a short and simple um, video for today. But, you know, probably my tip would be it's better to learn in another country how to drive if you don't know anything like if you started like zero like you never drove in the philippines or f from the country you came from i think it's better to learn here because you would know and learn you know, proper discipline in driving you know you discipline i'm hindi ko sinasabing uh filipinos are not a disciplined driver but you know medyo matitigan ako I, 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 might, I might admit I'm a bit stubborn at first when I was trying to learn like I would tell the, the my instructor why not why can't I do that like you know I, I tend to compare how I drive in the Philippines and that's wrong it's wrong you have to abide by their laws here because I now live here in United Kingdom so I have to follow their rules here so that's it and if you want to know how much it's quite expensive i started learning how to drive in 2017 and at the time i was only paying like 28 pounds per hour 
but my recent instructor or my recent driving lessons already cost me 42 pounds an hour imagine how much money i spent and every time you do a theory test you also pay I'm, I'm not sure anymore how much the theory test is i think it's around if i'm not mistaken like 38 pounds for the theory uh, uh, not or 45 around those price range 35 to 45 i think the theory test the practical test is 68 pounds so imagine i did four manual tests and that's around 68 pounds each how much is that right and in the automatic car i must admit i i passed on the third <laughs> i had my first um automatic uh driving test in the automatic car in December. Then I had my second in February and my third wherein I passed is also in February of this year, 2024. So it's quite the months. Yeah. So yeah, but you learn. That's how it is. You need to learn from your failures. It's not that bad. My first time in the automatic that I failed, it was my fault. I went into a bus lane and here that's a major fail like I drove in a bus lane. I just realized sh oh my god it's a bus lane then I changed lane but it's too late I still went in the bus lane even if I corrected it it's still a bus lane and you shouldn't drive in the bus lane that's my first uh, reason why I failed my first test the second test is observation and looking you know on your mirrors so i was already like going back to the testing center i said oh i think i drove great i think i have no errors yeah i actually didn't have much error to be honest i only have one minor fault however on the last one that the examiner asked me to do was to reverse two cars length and i didn't look enough on my left right and that's and that's a major one meaning it's a serious fault so if you have a serious fault you fail so i had one serious fault and one minor on my second try and then the last one wherein i passed i had four minor faults then no major but i had four but my minor faults were not too bad it's yeah it's all right but the, the, it doesn't matter how many as long as you don't have a major fault you pass you'll pass your test so basically that's it um, by the way sorry guys there's a towel behind me but anyway <laughs> that's the towel of my son but yeah so that's my story and for those people or filipinos who want to learn how to drive in uk i think you just need to try and try and never give up imagine me i spent a lot of money already to be honest but if you really want to learn how to drive decide from the start what type of car uh, i must admit i will advise if you're a bit old like me go for an automatic but if you're still young you're in your teenage years like 18 years old 19 or 20s do the manual car because i think it's still better to learn in the manual car because if you have a driver's license for a manual car you could drive both but if a, you've got a driver's license for automatic, you can only drive an automatic. So, and I think young, you know, the young ones today, the if you're younger, you, te you tend to learn quicker and faster. And if you're a bit older like me, I'm already in my 50s, you tend to be nervous. You know, you're not as confident as a young person. Yes, that's what I meant. So I would advise go for automatic especially me i'm a nervous person i always get nervous on my exams <laughs> that's why oh uh, yeah but hey yo what's important is hey you pass that's the important thing yeah so it's my seventh try imagine seventh try but doesn't matter as long as you pass now my next my next one now is i need to get a car but that will be in another video um i'm not anywhere discussing that but Maybe within the year, we'll get an automatic car. Well, that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching. And if you click 
my if you like my videos please click like and subscribe to my channel okay guys bye and see you again till next time i don't know when but i hope to see you soon bye guys bye